Ever wonder how I get my ideas for Dadvice TV? Or what's the hardest part of being so public about my disease? How about what are the best tips for fighting kidney disease and kicking it to the curb? Well, I'm gonna talk about that and more coming right up. James here with Dadvice TV, your online kidney health coach. And this is video number 66, helping you kick kidney disease to the curb and live an amazing life as a person yeah, who just happens to have kidney disease. A few days ago, I was on Urban Renal Talk with Tamika and Steve, a great program that everyone should be watching. I'm going to replay that entire interview for those of you who may have missed it. Now the interview went on for over an hour and a half, and I know that sounds like a long time, but believe me, it was full of all sorts of great information, and it gives you a pretty good peek into Dadvice TV, my history, and why I do this, and what drives me to keep learning, to keep getting more information from dietitians and nephrologists, and sharing it with all of you, my fellow kidney warriors. But before we start, I have one big ask for everyone, and please, please do this for me. Please subscribe to Urban Health Outreach Media on YouTube and follow them on Facebook. They put in so much effort and create so much amazing content for us kidney warriors, and they have other kidney warriors on there. They have people who have had transplants. They've got nurses. They've got technicians from dialysis centers. So much great, amazing information that not enough people are finding. So let's help them. Let's show them how powerful the Dadvice TV community is. Let's show them some love by subscribing to both their YouTube channel and to their Facebook page. Now, without any delays, here's a replay of that great interview. Hey, welcome to Urban Renal Talk with Tamika. And Steve, welcome everyone. What's going on, Tamika? What's going on? Nothing in the house. <laughs> <laughs> Same here. But, I mean, you making it through? Yes. Yeah. You know what? You, you find a way to adapt. Say that again? You find a way to adapt. Oh, absolutely. You know, absolutely. Like the beginning stages was rough. And then it's just like the new normal. Yeah, yeah. Um, even when I was in the military, I had to learn to adapt to that military life that I wasn't used to. But you're absolutely right. You you learn to adapt to the situation and you keep pushing forward. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, but yeah, Tamika, guys, whoever watching this broadcast. Oh, welcome to our YouTube. We're uh, streaming live on our YouTube channel, Urban oh, Health yes. Outreach Media. Thank you to our YouTube watchers if you are watching from there. But look, you guys need to share this video because I don't think you're going to ever, I mean ever, well, you may. I'm not going to say never say never, but I don't think you're going to ever get a show like this where you actually get to talk to a gentleman that uh, has kidney disease and turned it around from eight to 33 GFR. Tamika, let me just read you his uh, story. James Fabian, AKA Dad Vice TV. He's a kidney health coach a kidney patient uh, who guides other to discover hope and better tomorrows through education, motivation, and inspiration. Also, he was diagnosed with kidney failure. And check this out, Tamika. I'm sure a lot of people are told this. When he was diagnosed with kidney failure, he was told there was no hope of improving. No hope. And I'm sure I'm sure thousands of people are told this, and that's how they end up on dialysis. Yeah. 
what James did, aka Dad Vice TV, he freaking leveraged his super nerd powers, right? He leveraged it to improve his kidney health, which is simple through diet and lifestyle change. I know it's not once that again, simple for a lot of once people. Once again, diet and lifestyle changes changes everything. Yes. James focused on improving the quality of life for kidney patients with a strong focus on nutrition, making healthy choices, and being proactive with their healthcare team. Let's bring them on without further ado. The guy with 58.5 thousand YouTube subscribers. Oh my God. Without further ado, James Fabian, AKA Dad Vice TV. What's going on? Hey there, Steven Tamika. Wow, that was a great introduction. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I meant to put this up while I was doing it. I forgot all about it. Hey, there I am. Hey. That advice <laughs> helping you to beat kidney disease. That's or as right. I like to say, kicking kidney disease to the curb. Oh, yeah. That's your favorite like tagline. That. Yep. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, uh, who, what can I call you? Dad Vice or James? <laughs> Either one, I answer to both of them. Right. James, this is one thing. Um, I was driving back from the store, and I was just thinking about some questions to ask you. Um, but one thing I wanted to know, you have one video. Before we get in your story, I just wanted to hear this. You have one video called 12 Bad Habits That Can Damage Your Kidneys. <laughs> Uh, yeah. lead to chronic kidney disease or kidney failure. My most popular video that, and one of my oldest. That, that's what I was going to say. Wow. You had 1,106,737 viewers. Yep. Now. Yep. And, and I just wow. uploaded two days ago a new 2020 version of that. Not with 12 bad habits, but now with 18 bad habits. And I ran all of them by nephrologists, by dietitians, and said, what are the worst habits for kidney patients that we need to break if we want to kick kidney disease to the curb? And I made that list. Now, now let me ask you this. This is the question I wanted to ask about that video. Do you base that that was the best video on the content or because of the number of views that you received? Uh, only, oh, not because of the content, definitely because of the number of views. Right. There are a lot of people out there worried. They hear a little bit, little rumblings about kidney disease and they, they start researching it. And as you and practically every single one of your watchers out there have discovered, it's all negative for the most part, what you're gonna find. There's no hope that dialysis and transplant are the only options. It's as if it's a contest and you win when you get to dialysis, but that's not what we want. So a lot of people are out there, they're looking for what can they do? Is there any chance of stopping it? And one of the most popular search terms happens to be bad habits. And when I was thinking about ideas for videos. I'm looking at what people are typing in to search to find my other videos. And I didn't have too many of them at that point. And I saw so many of them about bad habits. So I went in, I sat down with my, my doctors and I asked them, what are the bad habits that I need to make sure I'm not doing at all? And I just wrote all those down, wrote down why they said they were bad habits. And I actually was sitting in the very chair right here in my office in front of my computer just turned my phone on just like we're doing right now. And I just started talking about those bad habits and posted it. Now in that video, and if you read a lot of the comments, there's a few, yeah, not too friendly comments in there, but they are honest where people were talking about how bad I looked. I was still just barely out of stage five. I was early stage four when I made that video. I was still suffering from severe anemia. As a matter of fact, all my early videos, I was in this chair 
because I had anemia and standing to talk for 10 minutes. Oh, oh it's just too much effort. Wow. But now I stand, I walk, I jog, I do whatever I want. Kidney disease does not hold me back. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Tamika. It's like basically saying I'm bigger than my diagnosis. Exactly. Kidney disease is not me. That's I just true. happen to be a person who has no, kidney, kidney disease. Exactly. exactly. Wow. Now, now, James, I know there's a story before Dad Vice TV and the 58 point uh, 5,000 YouTube subscribers. W where does that story start for you? All right. Well, so originally, Dad Vice TV was something I wanted to do for my kids. I had two little kids. And, you know, when you're a parent, you're looking for all these books on how to raise your kids. And most of them are actually written for the moms. Here's things you need to do, feeding up. Um, and I thought, you know, I want to make a YouTube channel. And as I'm figuring things out, like how do I teach my kids to ride a bike? How do I teach them to fly a kite? I wanted to make little videos, you know, advice from a dad about that stuff. And then the day came when I was diagnosed and I decided, you know, Dad Vice TV is now going to be my story, my journey. And it didn't start out as a resource for kidney patients. It started out as something to keep me focused. And my doctor recommended, James, I want you to vlog what's happening, what you're doing. I want you to keep these stories because when I was told that I had zero chance, that's the exact two words the nephrologist said, zero mm. chance of getting better. My only options were dialysis and transplant and try not to let my allergies get to me. <laughs> wow. She told me if I did not go on dialysis and my wife was standing there right next to me, that my wife would be getting, picking up my casket within 45 days. Are you serious? Wow. Yeah. She had the worst no bedside, bedside manners. No bedside manner. Oh my Broke God. My to wife make down in tears. She went to my, our family doctor to get herself checked. We have two kids. Right. You know, and my wife's looking at dialysis and even what it says online, 10% of people die. Those numbers are all misinterpreted that are out there. This is scary. And she Jeez. was worried. But my family doctor, he, he, he was the one who said, I can help you. You can get better. And that's why he wanted me to blog. He says, one day, you're going to be doing so good, people are going to want to know how you did it, and you're going to write a book. Well, wow. instead of writing a book, I launched a website so that it's available to everyone free at any time. Go mm. on there. Get the information. Use it if you want. If you don't want to, that's all right. Uh, and I try to remain positive. Because being positive has always helped me in my life. And I was raised that way to wow. see things more positive. Right. Wow. You know what, looking at things on the positive side, like boost your endorphins too. Like it just yep. boosts your spirits and everything. And with kidney disease, we need, we need motivation and we need support. And it's yeah. hard to find it. You're not, you know, I, I hate to say it. You're not going to find it at your nephrologist. No. Why do you think that's the case, James, that it's hard to find support and for people like yourself and us and others who may be trying to spread the word out? So I think what you guys are doing, first of all, is awesome. Thank you. I'm going to work with you, and we're going to help get more people viewing this show every week, okay? We're awesome. Make it happen. All right. All right. But when the, the, the problem I see... In the whole industry, the whole healthcare, when it comes to kidney disease, comes down to a couple things. One is communication. When the doctors are talking to us, we don't understand them. They're talking a different language. They might as well be speaking Martian or something like that. Even me, I consider myself a, a super nerd, okay? When the doctor was sitting there, renal failure, this, this, glomerular filtration rate, I was like, I have no clue what any of that stuff meant. But she just kept talking. It was like those old cartoons, Charlie Brown. Wah, 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 wah. That's what I heard. <laughs> right. I have no clue. But there's a communication. The doctors don't know how to talk to patients. And then the patients, this is shocking. It's scary. It's, it's devastating. 
So we don't know what questions to ask. So there's that communication problem right there, first off. Then the nephrologist, the kidney specialist, they're training until just recently. And I have a textbook from 2007, okay? Wow. And it still has this bad stuff in it. It recommends one can of soda per meal, okay? It's zero is the right answer, not one. That's and it zero. calls it a cola. It doesn't say soda. It's one cola. No. Oh, um, I get on my soapbox sometimes when I talk about right. that. But they were taught how to kind of just prepare you for dialysis. So mm -hmm. a lot of times. You, they look at your labs. Oh, yep, yep. No, they're stage four. There's nothing I can do. I'm not going to say anything. Oh, they're stage three they're at the high end. I'm still not going to say anything. Most people find out so late when it's even harder to make changes because yes. the doctors have nothing to do. Yeah. They were they were just taught, yeah, drink more water and eat less salt. How many people were told that? Practically yep. everyone. <laughs> right. Yeah. They told me a third thing. Don't eat microwave popcorn. That was the advice my doctor gave me. Drink more water, eat less salt, yes. don't eat microwave popcorn. You need dialysis, you'll die in 45 days. That wow. was their advice. Wow. wow. But you know, they're taught that dialysis is, is a great option. Now, for some people, I don't want to make it sound like dialysis is not worth it. For some people, you need dialysis. It's going to save your life. Your kidney damage Absolutely. is just too far. And not everyone can reverse it. But I believe everyone can slow it down greatly, mm -hmm. maybe even stop it and halt it at a GFR. And if you can get a GFR 20 to 30 in that range, you should be able to eliminate all of the symptoms. Mm -hmm. Now, there's going to be exceptions. Some diseases... Diet and lifestyle changes just are not going to stop it. And those people need dialysis. But doctors don't look at it that way. They look at it as that. Eh, every McDonald's practically has a, a dialysis center right behind it. What? My patients, you guys get to go to dialysis. Okay. I don't have to do anything. Right. And then there's a third thing. And then I'll let you. <laughs> no, go ahead. Then there's a third thing. Patients, when doctors do try, they've told me this because I've asked them, why is it like this? When they tell patients what to do, and they're sitting there, they've just been told their kidneys are failing. They're almost at kidney failure. You know, it's devastating. We're not listening. It's too much to take in. We're not ready to hear about diet and lifestyle changes or to, to talk to a dietitian. And when they do give us a dietitian, say you're in the ICU like me, the dietitian pops in. She saw your record, he or she for like 10 minutes and they've got like five minutes in your room to talk to you and then they're on their way. They don't really get to look at your labs and have a great conversation with you and talk about what foods do you like? You know, what kind of desserts do you eat? How often do you eat? They don't get to have that time and those deep conversations. So the combination of all of that is in my opinion, why the, the, the healthcare or the treatment strategies for those of us with kidney disease, is so poor here in the U.S. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, I wanted to ask you, at what point when you started this, when you first started doing the kidney health coaching, when did you realize you was making an impact doing this? Good question. Hmm. That, that's a very good question. That's a very mm -hmm. hard one. Um, I want to say. I mean, was it a particular video that that hit like seventeen thousand views, or was it, it one particular video? It wasn't, it wasn't a number. It was it was when people reached out to me, so people could reach out through the comments through Facebook. They could message me. There's also a form on DadVicetv.com. They can fill out, and then we can email back and forth. Hmm. It was really when I started seeing people, you know, saying, "Hey, you know." I pre you know, thank you for posting these things. They told me their stories or the stories of how, you know, they're working with their mom, trying to help them. Um, you know, one I just got this morning, the guy talked about his mom is his best friend and his hero. And it's like, those are so touching wow. to hear. And they're trying to find what they can. And there's so much negative out there. And 
to see an actual kidney patient, you know, and I looked awful in the beginning, okay? And I wasn't hiding it. To see me looking so bad, to hear me talking so slow and seeing my energy low, but then the next week to see another video and I'm better. The next week, I'm even better. I'm starting to look better. They saw with their own eyes what he's doing is working and people started talking about it. And I talk about what I've done, what has worked for me and what my doctors teach me. I'm not talking about, hey, here's a magic herb, here's some flower grown on the west side of some mountain in Tibet, and you need to take <laughs> it. None of that stuff. I'm not, I'm not selling false hope. I'm talking about my story. And I encourage everyone, always work with your doctor. I'm... Uh oh. Can we bet? There okay. we go. No. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh, let me see if I can bring you back. Yeah. Hold on. He may have to log out. How about now? No, you, you may have to log out and log back in. Yeah. The audio. Is All good. right, guys. I'm telling you, Tamika, this is an awesome show. But bar you know, none. The same thing that we're saying, but it's coming from a patient. You you get yes. to see where you know people can really understand where he's coming from because they're just like him right all right James, <laughs> can you hear you me back. now absolutely well what makes you be so transparent well so my doctor told me to start vlogging mm -hmm. and for myself and i thought well my hard drives and my computer is too small i'll just throw it all up on youtube and he wanted me to do this as if i was talking to someone that i knew on the other side of the camera not Doing these is like just like a diary, like, oh, today I did this, but as if I'm telling a story. And it was just out there, and, you know, people started finding it. And it started spreading. You know, it, Facebook spread it quite a bit, but YouTube was really good at knowing these people are looking for kidney stuff. And mm -hmm. people who see my videos, they give it a thumbs up. They're writing comments. The comments are positive. So then YouTube started finding other people that were searching for kidney-related stuff and recommending the videos, and they would find it that way. And it just grew wow. and grew and grew. Yeah. Um, so far, your page views are, is something like 5,201,266. <laughs> you yes. hear when, when you hear numbers like that, did you ever expect when you first started this journey that – you were going to have all these mid five million people view or see your page some way or another. No, I was hoping for ten thousand. That was my number. And in some of my videos, I talk about them like, "Hey, we're at a thousand. I'm shooting for ten thousand because I like to set stretch goals. Goals, you know, you know what? Set a big goal and then make little steps to make it there. Yeah, would you say it remind me of my? My um, friend, whenever he used to sell books, he'd be like, you know what, Tamika, we're going to go out there. And I'm going to sell 100 books. And he always surpassed that because he wrote it down, he put it on the paper, and he put it under one of the books. Awesome. Wow. Set himself a goal. Set now, himself now, a goal, yeah. I never really set a goal, though, of a number of views. I had numbers that I would say, hey, let's get to 10,000. My goals, so my personal goal is I want to get to stage two. Is it possible? No one knows. Can I do it? I'm going to try. Let's find out. Might take me a while. I'm over halfway there. So yeah. I'm doing great. But I set that goal. But what I'd really like to do, and Steve and I were talking about this a little bit a few days ago, is I would like Dead Vice TV to become large enough that I can get some sponsors and I would love to give out scholarships. Oh, I want to give out scholarships to people who want to be dietitians. We need more dietitians. They are so important in fighting kidney disease uh, and other careers that people want to go into. They want to become a nurse. I want to have scholarship programs and give them scholarships. Help make yes. it possible for them. And encourage them. It'll give them hope, too. Exactly. Exactly. Give them so and much hope. I would love to be able to travel visit mm -hmm. places and, and talk to people and give them hope. Let them know, you know, I see yes. myself as, as I show them there is hope. 
there are better tomorrows. It's not all yes. the doom and gloom that your nephrologist describes to you. And they're not meaning to do that. It's just the way they're trained in that, that poor right. communication between them and the patient. Yeah. I always tell my young patients, like, you know, when I see them on the machine, I'm like, so what are you doing after this? And they're always like, so what do you mean what I'm doing? That? What are you going to do after this? Like, you have all this time sitting here. What do you want to do? Are you going to mm-hmm. work for you or against you? And they're like, Tanika, I don't understand. I'm like, go to school. Yeah. For the education, you could do more than just this. Like, there's life outside of dialysis. Find it. Yep. And I think. And, and those was, on dialysis could even use that experience yes, to help I, others. Yes, but I think that would be so awesome because no one's given a scholarship to someone on dialysis. No. They look at them as the hopeless. They're not going to do that. So I think that right there will be awesome. To do. Well, that is my goal to be doing Speaking that. Speaking into existence. <laughs> Speak it into existence and you have it. Yep. You know, I think that's so awesome. Like, e- even just a makeover. Like, sometimes I want to reach out to cosmetologists and just ask, can you just give this lady a makeover just yep. to make her feel whole again? Exactly. It can make her feel like she's not she's not dialysis. Yeah. That she's a person again. Exactly. She just happens Absolutely. to have to go on dialysis. Right. Yep, I got my com- bigger than your diagnosis. My computer froze up, so I had to exit and come back. <laughs> <laughs> but James, so far, what has been your biggest challenge operating Dad Vice TV? Ah, uh, that's a good question. Mm-hmm. Probably the the biggest challenge. It's going to sound a little odd is remaining emotionally neutral. Mm. Um, There are, and there's some bad posts out there and there's some that you guys, no one sees that YouTube flags. Oh, we can tell you, (laughs) we can tell you about some bad posts. Exactly. I mean, I, some of the things people say is are pretty cruel. uh, and, And it's very few. It's very, very few people. But when you see one extremely, negative comment it could it can wreck your day or have you think like why the heck am i doing it? Do they realize yes. how much time and effort is going into all of this and i'm doing this myself out of my Three. yeah out of my own pocket and stuff don't they understand that why are they being negative why are they trying to derail things and then also there's some people that have you know things just don't go well Mm-hmm. and reading their stories and working with them. You know, I, I have to be strong mm-hmm. and look for the pod, the realistic positives. Sometimes, you know, I had one today, GFR4, mm-hmm. for the person. Um, they really do need to be on dialysis at GFR4. That's extremely dangerous. Yeah. You, you know, and they chances are... Yeah. Your kidneys are too yeah. damaged yeah. for diet and lifestyle. And, you know, and having those frank conversations with those people, I may even get their phone number, call mm-hmm. them, or I email them directly. As soon as I see that, I'll stop what I'm doing. But that's probably the biggest challenge, remaining emotionally neutral so that I can stay um, logical, you know, mm-hmm. stay focused, um, and helpful for them. Right. And mm-hmm. how do you do that? Just ask them. It's <laughs> sometimes you just gotta back away, take a take some breaths, um, and then I think about how lucky I am, the things that I have. You know, it, it, probably the, the hardest ones are the ones where, um, you know, maybe they had someone who was watching my videos and really liking them, um, and then they passed, and and a relative will tell me about that. Um, and a mm. lot of people I've really got to know really well out there through emails and comments. I recognize them they're like family and you know, those are the hardest ones. And when I see that, I have to kind of back away. If I was getting ready to do a video that day uh, or working on that week, I got to, I, I want to give them the, the, the time to think about what happened and process it and then get back on to other things. But uh, you know, I, I stay focused, stay positive and, um, and you know, but that is the biggest challenge is that emotionally neutral. Because, um, uh, I would say 
I wear my emotions on my sleeve, you know. And there's a couple oh, videos where you can see my eyes starting to tear up a little bit you uh, when I'm it. talking about something. Um, and yeah. actually, and I were talking the other day, and you know, we were talking about something, and I started to get a little choked up. Yeah, I tried to right. get right. out you're of there. Human. Like you're you're human. Yeah, but that 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 itself is the hardest thing. Creating the videos isn't hard. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I got my room set up next door. It's easy to go in there. I practice the scripts over and over and over. Wow. Um, I, yeah, I try to memorize everything that I talk about. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then all those words, you know, nephrologists and all, the, you know, now I can say them all, but I had to learn how to say those. And every script I write now, I send it to dietitians. I send it to nephrologists. And I get them to validate it all that it's accurate. Because now I really want to be accurate on everything that right. I say and clear. And they'll add in all sorts of, you know, tongue twisters. It's, it's like they're trying to, you know, get me to make some bloopers. Um, but but the creating the videos is easy. The editing them is, is, is easy. Um, you know, YouTube makes it all really easy to create content and get it out there. Uh, but that hardest part is, you know, just keeping my own emotions in check, working with people from either those that are extremely negative or those that think just don't go well for them. And I feel yeah. for them. Right. Hey, James, your your video, coronavirus and oh. CKD, mm-hmm. I, I saw you had 9.1 thousand uh, views on that. Did were you expecting more than that, or was that surprising that you got that many for uh, dealing with a, a unprecedented topic such as the coronavirus and CKD? Yeah, so I, I really I don't pay attention to numbers, but I created that one before the whole pandemic, before the lockdowns. Hmm. I was just getting ready to take a trip to Florida with the family, and I was like, ah, oh, we're going to be away for two weeks. I need to get a video, and... The family doctor, my primary care physician, the guy who has guided me through all of them, um, he has a, a cartoon character called Mr. Hand, and he, uh, he talks about the T-zone, <laughs> don't touch your eyes, your nose, your mouth. He's gone to D.C. to promote, you know, better hand wash. These cool little portable tools, when there's a flu outbreak, they can bring him into the classroom really big on that so i pretty much just went over the things he told me i asked him, what do i need to do to keep from getting the flu and to keep from getting this this coronavirus that seems to be picking up it wasn't a pandemic back then it was just starting to it was something and i just took his information and i was during a checkup stopped in for a checkup got some information and i put that video out there real quick and about a week later, it's a pandemic, and then we're off to Florida. And YouTube was really concerned about anything about COVID-19 or coronavirus. Mm-hmm. So they actually were hiding a lot of those because they didn't want the fake stuff out there. There there were some dangerous things. There was a video out there about drinking bleach. That what? is not going to do anything except sure. cause problems. That wow. Is not a solution for anything. And wow. they don't have the people available to watch every single video. So they just pretty much, they kind of hushed a lot. Yeah. And if you t- mention coronavirus or COVID-19, can't run any ads, it'll pay you anything. Um, and that's not why I do it. I don't do it for the ads. But I just created it, put it out there because it was timely. It was just like, yeah, I need something timely. Um, I'm working on a video right now that will be coming out probably next week about foods you can eat and things you can do in your diet to help boost your immune system. Mm -hmm. There's no one food you can eat, but there are things that if you do, they can help boost your immune system. And I'm doing it because it's timely. A lot of people are asking those questions in the comments. What can I do to boost my immune system? Can I have vitamin C? Can I do this? So I've got a dietitian, amazing dietitian I'm working with on this one. Um, it's Jess from the Kidney RD. They're a virtual dietitian. So if you don't have a good one in your area, you can work with them. You'll hire them and they'll work with your doctor. They'll look at your labs. They have classes you do virtually to learn how to prepare your kitchen. 
So you just got diagnosed with kidney disease. Chances are your kitchen's full of a whole bunch of poison for you. You know, mm-hmm. now Jane, phosphorus food stuff. Yeah. We had someone that asked Sean uh, K. O'Hare, and I, I know the answer to this, but they asked uh, possible the red CKD for someone like self on dialysis 15 years now. Ooh, 15. So, so they're looking to graduate off of dialysis is what they're looking to do, uh, is my guess. Um, that's a very difficult question to answer. Uh, first of all, I've never been on dialysis, so I can't really talk from experience. Now, I have ran into people, and there's people who, have, who comment on a lot of my videos that have done home dialysis because you're allowed to drink more water since you're doing mm-hmm. it every night. And it has allowed them to do similar to what I'm doing while working with their doctors and a dietitian. And some people have graduated off of dialysis. Now, you're not going to make it. You know, Don't think you're going to get back to stage one or stage two but you may be able to get possibly to stage three, keeping an eye on your diet and lifestyles. I have heard of people who are on dialysis where they go into a center like DaVita um, getting off of it, but I do not know anyone personally who has done that. Normally when that happens, Sean, it's normally if someone has uh, acute kidney injury. Right. Um, where it may be some shock to the kidneys and they temporarily shut down and then dialysis does the work while the kidneys rest and get them a chance to heal back up to start functioning again. I see many people like start dialysis maybe for a month and the doctor had them maybe two and a half hours for two days a week because they were uh, acute kidney injury and maybe after a month or two, they were off dialysis. Right. right. And, and, and uh, now go ahead, Tamika. You know, I was just going to explain what that is. Just like a car accident can be acute kidney injury. You know, something. Oh, like absolutely. That. Any type of shock yep. to the kidneys. Mm-hmm. Wow. Now, now, James, let me ask you this. If someone was watching this show, they saw what you did and they wanted to do something like that, what kind of suggestion would you tell them? So they need to they need to put together a great help. When I first you froze. Okay. okay, your question broke out there a little yeah. bit at the end. But they, they need to get a health care team. That's good. You can't do this on your own. You need a doctor who's going to communicate with you, that you understand. And, and I don't mean understanding as in, you know, you, they need to speak English at our level as a patient. Not expecting us to understand doctor level stuff. We didn't go to med school. We don't have nine years of education and, and, and Latin <laughs> to lean on. They right. need to talk to us in English and we understand that healthcare team includes your primary care physician, it includes your nephrologist, it includes extremely important a dietitian, a renal dietitian who will look at your labs and make adjustments for you. Um, you may also have a urologist, an endocrinologist. That is your healthcare team. They need to talk to each other, they need to have a system to share your labs, to share your results to share information from your visits from each of them. And they need to understand they're to work together, that no one of them can is going to run the ball you know, and say, hey, this is it. I don't care about what the others say. But you do need one to be the quarterback. I think of, I'm a Seahawks fan. One needs to be Russell Wilson, okay? <laughs> I love Russell Wilson. <laughs> one needs to be Russell Wilson so he knows, hey, this play right here, Boom. We need that doctor's advice. I need that doctor's advice for this one. Together, these ones, we can do it. We can get you to where you need to be. So for me, my primary care physician is my quarterback. So that's the first thing. Then you need to manage whatever caused your kidney damage. No more damage. You got to manage it. Was it high blood pressure? Was it diabetes? Is it lupus? What is it? We need to do what we can to manage it the best. Then we got to stop all bad habits that cause damage. If you're smoking, come on, you know it's bad for you. 
it's not going to help you kick kidney disease to the curb. Kick smoke into the curb. So find all those bad habits that hurt your kidneys. Um, then you got to manage your blood pressure. Whether you have high blood pressure or not, you got to keep an eye on it always. You got to keep an eye on your blood sugar. Even if you're not diabetic, still get your A1C checked once a year. Keep it at 5.7%. Or below, because we don't want that to turn into something causing kidney damage. And then you're going to live a healthy lifestyle. You're going to get some exercise. We need blood flow. Blood flow is the, the power that makes our kidneys work. We need the blood flowing through there, not too high of a pressure, or it's going to cause problems, and that can't be fixed, and not too low of pressure. So that's why that monitoring your, your blood pressure and managing is important. The program I do, it's all of those things together, and I started getting better. And it, it sounds like a whole lot to do, but it's not. Now I have no problem. I can go out to eat at any restaurant. I can quickly know, boom, I know what to eat. I'm fine. I'm good. I don't have to look things up in an app anymore and, and find out I've learned what works. And it's now second nature. But the hardest part is going to be breaking bad habits. And one of my worst habits was drinking soda. Every single meal I sat down, I had a two liter of Dr. Pepper. Oh, I love Dr. <laughs> Pepper. Holy cow. Oh, there was, I, I could never give it up is what I thought. The day I was diagnosed, I never had a sip of it again since then. Now, always at arm's reach, water with lemon. That's all I drink. But but wow. you know, that's what you need to do. But the healthcare team, you can't do it alone. Well, you, I have a point. I'm sorry. Go again. Why don't you think that the doctors encourage exercise? Like as long as I've been in working in dialysis, I rarely hear them encourage patients to <laughs> exercise. When oh. I say rarely, it's been because my son is 20, 20, 21 years. It'll be twenty two. Shoot, it'd be 22 at the end of this month. Hold on. <laughs> but it's like, I don't ever hear them encouraging them to exercise. I don't ever hear them encouraging them to get a gym membership yep. just to walk, lightweight yep. or anything like that. Like nothing strenuous, just something that's going to get the heart pumping. They're not trained that. They're not trained about what to eat. They're not trained no. about nutrition. They're not trained about exercise. They are trained how to prepare you for dialysis. For dialysis. And right. if you even look at the websites, like the National Kidney Foundation, mm -hmm. stuff like that. What is stage four? It's learn about the forms of dialysis and pick which one you want because you're about to win the big prize. Right. That's what their website talks about. It doesn't even talk about now's the time to hunker down on your diet. Get really strict. Make sure you got that blood pumping. As you said, nothing too strenuous. Yeah, Good jump rope, walk, and play with the kids. Right. And then you and then you know what else? They never have them address why they got there or look at why they got there so they can see how they used to live and then how mm -hmm. they need to live now. Yep. So maybe if you can address, okay, you have diabetes because maybe you were eating this, 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 taper down on that and taper down on that again and then taper down and eventually you'll be off of what caused you to have diabetes in the first place. Yeah, and diabetes with the the standard American diet, the SAD diet, uh, we're high carb, we're mm -hmm. high sugar. That's not good for your kidneys, not good for your liver, not yeah. good for your heart. Um, that needs to change. And when you talk mm -hmm. to a dietitian, they know that's not right. But there's a lot of great doctors on YouTube talking to you about that, about how mm -hmm. to do a keto diet. And keto is not high protein. A lot of people mistake that for high protein. Mm -hmm. It is high, good fat, low protein, extremely low carb. Uh, but yeah, they don't talk about that stuff. They're they don't talk about, about exercise. We're not they're, talking about exercise. They're not trained to do that. And now that did change. In 2008, the textbooks from 2008 on have a little bit more, not enough, a little more about nutrition, a little bit more about getting exercise, getting that movement going, keeping that blood flow going, because that's the key to your kidney health is blood yep. flow. Yeah, I think not too much, Europe, not too low. Mm -hmm. I think over in Europe, they do a lot of exercise on the machine. 
they have the little stationary pedal bikes and it's just the yeah. feet. And they have sometimes the patients. I got one under my desk right here. <laughs> so yeah, they actually wow. have the patients doing that on the machine. Yeah, so that's great. They're sitting there. They're sitting there. Keep, yep. keep the blood keep flowing. The blood keep flowing. going. Exactly. Yep. And I think that if some of the some of the units in the United States will follow that same concept, I think a lot of patients' quality of care will be different. It'll be a different outcome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree 100 percent And it doesn't take much to exercise. So when I started, I my anemia was bad. Mm -hmm. When getting up out of a chair, like sitting in this chair at first, it felt like wearing like a hundred pound weighted blanket. It was so heavy. It took so much effort just to stand up. I was out of breath and just walking. I felt like I was wearing a giant weighted blanket on me. Mm. And I just started walking a little bit. The next day, a little bit further. I remember when I was able to check the mail. I was so excited. Wow. And, and, and I don't have a mansion, okay? I have a tiny little house. <laughs> and <laughs> it's a single story. It's very small. And the mailbox isn't that far away. I can throw a baseball and hit it really easy. Uh, but I remember being excited. I walked there. I remember trying to walk down the street. I wanted to go a quarter of a mile. And I told my wife, I might have to call you on my phone to come pick me up. But I made it. I made my walk. I came back. And I remember getting to a quarter mile. And I was so excited. And I just, it was baby steps. But it all added up. And it helped. Now, I do a minimum five miles a day, 10,000 wow. steps, and it's easy to do. I'm not exhausted. It's helped keep my blood flow. It clears my mind. I'm getting fresh air while I'm outside. I'm keeping my social distance, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> behaving. I'm going walking tomorrow morning. You <laughs> there you go. <laughs> he just said something that had a light bulb go off in my head. So maybe we could find somewhere where we could get steppers and donate them to patients and have like a whole group of thousand steppers a day or 10,000 steppers a day and see how that will improve some of the patients' quality of life also. Yeah. And, and my right. doctor, I'm my sure they had to get position, doctor. He, uh -huh. he told me, hey, I want you to get, I remember, 4,000 steps a day, work up to 4,000. I got mm -hmm. there. He goes, great. Now you got to do 5,000. Wow. Really? And then it got higher. I remember 7,500. And he was like, can you do 10,000? That's not going to be easy. It's going to be tough. That's a challenge. I took it. And I did wow. it. That's, I like that. Because like that a lot of patients don't even exercise. So then when they go to get evaluated for the transplant, they fail. Yeah. Their, their, their BMI is too high. And, and you know the test... A little bit of exercise could help so much. Yes, but if, if you're not prepared for to do what you have to do on that stress test and you're not mm -hmm. a person that walk and they see you get out of the breath, they're going to deny you because you can't pass the stress test. And it's only because you don't exercise, you don't walk. Yeah, and you're not encouraged to walk. They don't, no. they don't realize how important that is. Wow. Now, 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 James, how big of a fan base do you have overseas? Oh, so about 36% of the audience is in the U.S. Oh. Wow. So yeah, most of so, your fans are over, overseas. 64% yeah, is wow. overseas. Now, that includes Canada, Mexico, a lot of U.K., a lot of the Philippines, India, Australia slash New Zealand. What? Well, I know the answer to this, mm -hmm. but... Why do you think if we're supposed to be one of the richest nations on earth, <laughs> but yet 30 36% of your fan base is just US and the majority is in other countries, telling me that they're more proactive than we are about their kidney health in, in other countries? Yeah, well, the internet makes us all equal. So, so we're all we're all the same, which is great. And there's so few people like you and I, like us, who are sharing kidney disease and being positive, giving people advice, giving them tips, letting them know there is life after diagnosis. And it's not bad. It can be great. 
You just need to make a few changes. As a matter of fact, and, and I'm going to get a little off track right here. Sure. Uh, when I was diagnosed, I was extremely obese. I was extremely unhealthy. Um, diabetes was not the cause of my kidney disease, but my blood sugar, my A1C wasn't good. I was pre-diabetic. Uh, oh, I was just so unhealthy. Um, and I hate to say this, but I just lost track of what I'm going to say. <laughs> I was unhealthy. Um, darn it. I lost track of my train of thought there. And no, that, oh, that really we understand. <laughs> if it comes back, please just jump in and say it because I know it happens to me all the time. <laughs> yeah, what was the question again? It might remind me what I was going to say. It was something good. I forgot. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I was going to say I was unhealthy. Uh, it was about the global the global environment looking for kidney No, disease. what I asked you, what no, what I asked you James was why do you think the majority of people in other countries uh gravitate to your information more than uh the US population? You said 30% 30 percent of yeah. your viewers from the US. Why do you think that's so? Because do you think it's because we don't promote healthy uh living and you know advocate for kidney disease education awareness I mean, I like they may big, do in other countries? Yeah. We don't make people aware of it. You know, you rarely hear about kidney disease. Though 10 to 12 percent of the population has kidney damage. That's, that's that's massive. And only one of 10 of those know that they have problems. We don't make people aware of it early enough. Mm -hmm. That's a huge part of it. Other countries, your, your GFR is 79. They're sitting down and they're practically scaring them to death. They're saying, hey, your kidneys have problems. We got to make changes now. Mm -hmm. In the U.S., the 79, I'm not going to say anything. Doctors just let you keep going. So many patients have told me when they got diagnosed, they got earlier labs mm -hmm. and they looked at them and they had problems. Their GFR was low. It wasn't low enough. They were stage um, uh, two, stage three A, and nothing was said about it. In other countries, they tend to tell them early. In the U.S., we wait till it's, it's you know, you're stage four or five is when most people find out. And there's so much leaning on dialysis centers. That's the answer. You have yeah. kidney disease. Yeah, it almost dialysis. sounds diabolical. Right. And you're yeah. so it almost right sounds diabolical. Right. You're so right because overseas, they do a lot of home dialysis. Mm -hmm. A lot of them are home. It's not like the clinics here. Like They don't have the millions of clinics everywhere you turn around. There's two clinics right around the corner from each other. They're home. Yeah. The government do pay like they pay here and a lot of them still work. They had yeah. they had to work. Yeah, and if you if you get a hold of people early, they can make lifestyle changes, mm -hmm. they can make diet changes, they can delay or maybe even avoid the need for dialysis. And they're just doing so much better. So when I was first diagnosed and I was sitting there in the ICU, first of all, I was in complete denial. It's not kidney disease. They're wrong. You know, I don't have kidney failure. I'm not going to die. Uh, of course, I was, I was wrong, but I felt they were wrong. But I started looking. I'm like, I'm going to get the best treatment. I'll call my insurance. I'm going to bug them to get me the best doctors, the best whatever it is. Who is the best doctor? So I started researching it. And what I discovered was the United States... <laughs> Guess where they rank on kidney care outcome in the world? What number we are by the World Health Organization? Where the United States, this big old rich company, or right. country with all this technology, we're so advanced, we got all this stuff. Guess where we rank in the world with four. kidney care outcome? You say fourth? Four. Yes. I wish you're off by a little bit. We rank 72. Wow. There are 71 other countries that have better kidney care outcome than us. I could believe wow. It. And these countries, when you look at that list, they look like third world countries. You're like, what the heck? 
how the how is this possible? How are they ranking so much better than us with kidney care outcome? And that's what my question was. And I started looking into it. They don't have dialysis centers everywhere. Mm-hmm. We do. Yep. So we just send people to dialysis. That's mm-hmm. your outcome. And of course, we don't talk about exercise. We don't talk about the 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 stress dialysis puts on your heart and help people live a heart healthy life while on dialysis so they don't have heart issues. These other countries, they don't have dialysis easily available. It's mm-hmm. a last resort. So they right. focus on what can we do to reverse, to slow down or to stop the progression of your kidney disease. And when I saw that, that gave me hope. First, I was, I was like shocked for 72. How the, how the heck does that happen in the world? Um, and like, uh, I'm trying to remember some of the countries that ranked higher. Than us. There are all these ones whose names, you, you can't find them on a the map. You look at you're like, what? How are they better? But that comes wow. back, you know, that, that, that's part of our problem. In the United States, we don't tell people early. We don't discuss kidney disease. Um, there's not a lot of, not done around awareness for it. Doctors, nephrologists rarely leverage the help of a dietitian, which is unbelievable help when you get a dietitian involved. Life changes. They're going to help you get your life back. The, the nephrologist, it's like they're afraid to help you talk to a dietitian. I, I, I don't understand it. And I ask them that all the time. And I'm very blunt with them. I might tick sure. some of them off, but that's okay. You know, they, they took a duty to help people. And I believe they should see dialysis as a failure. You know, they couldn't stop it. So, you know, you know they should look at it as a failure. You know, then the people go on it and then let's treat them. Let's, let's keep them healthy while they're on it. Instead, they don't see it as a failure. They see it as the next step. You're going to go on dialysis. Mm-hmm. That's what it is. And that's not always yes. the answer. Okay. Um, let me ask you, um, Jared uh, A. Brown, uh, host of Warriors Quest, has a question. He wants to know, uh, how do you properly add tags to your videos on YouTube? Ah, I use a free tool. So first of all, I pay for everything out of my own pocket. Um, the camera gear, the website, all that stuff. So I'm always looking for free tools, looking for coupons, looking for discounts from manufacturers. Um, and um, morning, something morning. Darn. If you email me, and my contact form is on uh, Dad Vice TV. Go to a, About and Contact. I will get the links and send them to you. But there's a free tool. You type in a word, Morning Fame. That's what's called Morning Fame. I think it's morning.fame is the, the URL. Um, you type in what you want to rank for, and it'll say, hey, there's too much competition. You're not going to rank for that those keywords um, or that, that main keyword. It'll help you find the keyword to rank for, and then it will give you suggestions of other keywords, and it'll help you write your description so that you can be found. But the cool thing about YouTube, and this is a huge difference between it and Facebook for people like us who are creating content that's helpful. On Facebook, you have to go find your audience. You know, you have to be proactive. You have to find them. On YouTube, make the content. If people engage with it, even if they give you a thumbs down, they're engaging with it. YouTube will find the audience for you using the keywords that you put in there. So you want to mention kidney, CKD, renal. If it's about kidney stones, which I have not done a video about at all, but apparently that is the number one search thing on YouTube is kidney stones. What should I do? Uh, If you put kidney stones in there, they're going to put it. They're going to get you in front of people. They will find the audience for you. You don't have to do anything but make the content. Wow. Wow. That that was some great advice. (laughs) Now, how how you have what is it to date 65 videos that you yeah. broadcasted 65 videos about kidney disease now where do you get the ideas to come up for this content or to come up for your shows 
like how do you like like next week or however often you do your shows how do you know like tomorrow i'm going to do this and then next week i'm going to do that is this something that you pre-plant like like a year in advance or something like that or how, how do you come up with 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 these different topics great question so in the beginning it was just whatever my last appointment was that i talked about with my doctors and i wrote notes so when i go to my doctors i if they allow me i record the conversation so then i have perfect notes otherwise i write down everything and i always go in with questions and the questions are why about something how if i don't what happens so i can get information i use that now i plan things out and i look at what people are asking for trends or what's coming up so next month is world hypertension month so high blood pressure month is is next month and on i think it's the 17th yeah may 17th is actual world hypertension day so i glad gonna, you told me that <laughs> I'm going to do a lot of videos next month about high blood pressure, which is so important for kidney disease. And, and to date, I've talked oh, so God. much about bad habits and diet, but blood pressure control is even more important. Um, as a matter of fact, at my desk, you can see my desk behind me. Yes. I always have a blood pressure monitor near me. <laughs> Here's the one that I'm using now, a little wireless Withings one, I take my blood pressure every single morning, every afternoon, and then late in the evening. And I, I'm going to do a review about this device here. And, you know, it is absolutely amazing, uh, especially people who travel, people who don't like cords, people who don't always have their phone next to them, people who want to make the, the data available to their doctor. It checks all of those boxes. Um, I don't want to turn it into an infomercial, but it, it's absolutely awesome. Sure. Device. No, no, but absolutely. I'm going to do a detailed review of why I use that one over other ones and some of the ones that I've used in the past and the problems that I've had with them. And some of them are just a pain in the butt to use, and then you don't want to use them. You get discouraged. You're like, ah, thinking it's my phone is too hard. I'm not going to take my blood pressure three times a day. It's too much problem. So I'm going to talk about that. Um, so next month will be lots of blood pressure stuff. Um, the diet, you know, I'm working with a dietitian. We're going to talk about immune system because there's a lot of people asking about that. So I look for what are people asking? And what's kind of unique is I don't do dead advice TV. Um, it's not a business. It's not like I'm sitting there going like, Ooh, which video is going to get me in a million views? Um, because <laughs> Uh, for that, you really, you know, you look at these other people, they've got a studio, they've got makeup artists, they've got lighting and boom mics and all this stuff. You know, I'm using a cheap little like $12 clip on mic when I have my mic and stuff, you know. <laughs> right. I just need wow. to get the content out there. You know, it, people are looking for certain questions and answers. Some of them don't have access to a doctor who's going to answer those questions. And my health team is all amazing. And I just ask them the questions. I actually type the questions out, email them to them. They give me some answers. I then kind of write a script about it. Then I start emailing it back out. Can you verify I got all this right? I'm not misinterpreting something. And if it's got something about diet, I'll also run it by a nutritionist. Um, when, you know, one of the dietitians I have, can you make sure this is all right? Anything I can add to this, they give it back to me. Um, and since I'm so focused now on accuracy, I want to get as accurate and as complete with disclaimers and everything as possible in there. Um, it takes a bit. It could take a couple weeks, maybe two or three weeks to get a script down. And then it takes me about a week of practicing and memorizing them. And I, wow. no one's perfect, but I am so hard on myself when I make those videos. There has never been a video that I'm like, oh. This is done. It's great. It can't be any better. Right. I, I'll be working on it. Like, oh, I don't like how I said that. Oh, I paused too much. Let me run back over there and I'll re-record this section. What color of shirt wow. was I wearing? It's got all these different colors. And I got to find the right one. Or maybe I got the haircut. I'm like, oh, darn it. I can't reshoot that part. <laughs> so <laughs> so basically, it, it pretty much uh, a whole production 
that you have set up with the script, the shooting, yep. the editing, um, wardrobe, maybe a little bit of uh, makeup or wh whatever it's the case. A little bit. It's the powder because I got a right for the lighting. Yeah, my so the light doesn't of, bounce off. It's racing for the back, so oh, okay. it's a little glary. <laughs> no, but that, that's awesome because I was that was my next question. How long does it take for all this to come together for one video or one broadcast? It could be say fifteen or twenty minutes. How long would that take to make? So About the a last week? the last video I did ended up being twelve minutes edited. So I'm trying to make them faster. And shorter because I like to ramble. Um, and anyone who has not figured that out hasn't watched very many of my videos. <laughs> uh, but it took me about a full day, probably, you know, at least eight hours of editing for that one because there was a lot of B roll. So I purchased, I licensed all that B roll. The, 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 yeah, I saw it. No, I saw the yeah, B roll. The I was like, photo, wow. The stock images. Yeah, I yeah. licensed all that. I don't want anything to be not legit or to get in trouble for anything. And sure. somebody recorded that. They deserve their money. If I'm going to use it, they deserve the money. Uh, so I, I pick what I want. Uh, I, you know, I'll, I download like a low-res version. has stuff all over it. Make sure it kind of looks right. And then I pick what I want, license it, swap it out. But that video took at least eight hours of editing. And oh, I, I shot that one over two days. And, and I work full time, so I don't get to just go into my, the room and record all day. Um, I, record wow. them, I record them in the evening, which also helps because the dogs aren't barking next door. I got dogs on both sides that bark a sure. lot during the day. Uh, so I record them in the evening. So I turn all the lights, you know, I, you know, <laughs> brush my teeth, make sure I look fresh and woken up in the morning. And I record those, and it took me two days of shooting so probably six hours of shooting then a day of editing to get a 12 minute video so it, it takes quite a bit of effort to do that it could be much faster my old videos i just set up the camera i just started talking and then all of a sudden i'd be like okay my battery's almost done the video's done you know i just rambled i didn't have scripts or anything um but from start to finish so for may 17th i'll be broadcasting live and doing a video on World Hypertension Day. Um, I hope to have the script for that one uh, next week and then send it off and make sure it's all accurate. I'm going to be talking about products. So, you know, this, this Withings BPM Connect, and I'll be talking about it. So I'll actually tell them, hey, here's the things I'm going to say about it. Did I get anything wrong? You know, it, it's got a six-month battery, but that's using it once a day. I use it uh, three times a day, and it lasts about two months on a single charge, which is fantastic, and it's rechargeable. Um, I want to make sure that they know, okay, yeah, that's what he's going to say. No, it's not right. It's one and a half months. They may say that. Um, right. So I don't want to be saying anything that's incorrect and have someone in the comments going, I bought one, and it doesn't work that long. Um, but they'll validate. Sure, that's the, understandable. They'll validate stats. They're not going to validate my opinion. Um now, I do review some products that are just junk. You know, they don't work, and you never hear about those. If, if it's not good, I'm not going to talk about it at all. Mm. Um, so people know when they hear me talk about products that they work for me and I like them. <laughs> it, l let me interrupt you there. Um, I'm not going to keep you much longer, but before we go, speaking of products, uh, tell us about this one product right here that – you promote that it's you've like been taking. Rinadale? Yes. Yes. Rinadale. <laughs> which, which you just goes with the chemo forte. So we get our... <laughs> yes. And I just want to let people know that uh, before you say something, James, that uh, Kibo is running a special. We got a ticket across. If you use code UKA2020, you can get three bottles of Rinadale and one bottle of Fortis. For one sixty two forty, but you got to use UKA twenty twenty and register at the site. Uh, and I want to put the site uh, down right now. There you go. There now you tell go. us you you're using this product. Oh yeah. In conjunction to your uh to your regimen. Yep. So 
So my quest is to get to stage two. Don't know if it's possible or not, but I'm going to try it. I'm not going to give up. Uh, my doctor already told me it was impossible to get better, and I got way, way better. Blew past that. So I got stuck. My GFR just sitting there floating along, pretty much stable. And I was, I was actually disappointed. I'm like, ah, oh, it's got to keep going. There's more in there. I know it. Um, I was just right on 29.30, just going back and forth, stuck there. And my, my bun, my, my, uh, blood ure, my blood urea nitrogen was pretty high. It was uh, uh, 42. Um, difficult to get that down. Difficult to get creatinine down. So I went to my, my doctor and I was like, okay, what else can we do? There's got to be more. I know there's more in there. And he said, hey, I've been reading some stuff about this probiotic. Let's try it. Everything looks really good. It's been around for a long time, 12 years. I never heard about it. Um, and I actually did try it once, but I didn't take it long enough. Only bought one bottle early, about a year ago, and only took it for a month. You got to take it for 90 days. It takes two and a half months to build up a, a large enough colony for this to make a difference. But pretty much what I did is I got labs. Well, well, first off, I bought it. Went on Amazon and bought a three-month supply of it. And then I called up the CEO of the company. I am not shy to find out who the CEO is of a company and call them direct. I said, hey, here's who I am. I got a little YouTube channel. I'm going to take this stuff. And I hope it works because then I can talk about it. But what can I do to make sure this works? What do I need to do? Are there foods I shouldn't eat that are going to stop this from working? And we had a conversation, you know, and he pretty much answered all my questions. I was worried, do I have to take this with food? Can I do this with intermittent fasting? Because that's what I do. And the biggest advice he gave me was take it with fiber. Fiber is going to turbocharge this. It's the food for this. And I told him, okay, I'm using Benefiber. I sprinkle it on every food. And he said, hey, we got a fiber pill and in the powder, it's better than Benefiber. And he explained why, all the scientific information. He sent me tons of information. So I then went to the hospital, got brand new fresh labs, exactly where I'm at. And then I started taking Renadil two tablets every morning for 90 days. Day 92, I went and got brand new labs. And remember, I you know, bought this on Amazon, kept it in the refrigerator like you're supposed to, was taking it. I went in the hospital, took my labs. I'm going about my day. And then my results start showing up on my phone. And I almost cried when I saw these. They were so impressive. I, I thought I was stuck. I was stuck for months. I couldn't get any better. And I wrote them down because I knew you'd probably ask about it. Uh, my, my creatinine, so, so Rinadil pretty much turns your intestines into a mini little dialysis machine. And it pulls excess creatinine and other waste products out of your blood. It, it consumes them, eats them as food, and then you pass them in your stool when you go to the bathroom. So it's like a little mini dialysis machine right there in your, in your intestines. You don't have to do anything. Just pop two pills. It truly is magic in a bottle. But my creatinine, which was stuck for months and months and months, at 2.52, my next set of labs. Oh, and during this time, we had Christmas, Thanksgiving, my daughter's birthday. We had Halloween. My diet was awful. I was eating. I ate some ribeyes, which I usually don't eat animal protein. My diet was awful. And I was traveling a bunch for work. My creatinine went from 2.52 to 2.5. 2.25, which gave me a bump of my GFR of four. But most importantly, my bun went from 42, and it was so hard to get that down to 28. That's just three points above normal. All of that just from taking Renadil for three months. And in between that first lab and that second lab, I actually got labs a few times with my doctor, and I saw. Yeah, it was staying steady. Then as I got about around a little over the two-month mark, things started improving, and they just kept improving as I got closer to that 90-day mark. What they say about building up a big enough colony of this good bacteria in your gut is really, really important. You need it to get large enough to start making a difference. And I've continued taking it, 
and I feel so much better. I know I am better. But of course, with with coronavirus and all that right now, the hospitals are saying, hey, don't be stopping in for labs every week. We don't want to see you. They tell me, we'll see you later. You're, as long as you're doing good, come back, you know, eventually when all this stuff's over. Um, but I am eager to see how it's doing. But this stuff is absolutely incredible. In my opinion, this is magic in a bottle. For kidney patients, whether you're on dialysis or not, this is going to help. It's not going to cure things. There is no cure, but this is going to help. Get rid of that, those extra waste products. Lower your, your BUN. Lower your creatinine level, which is going to increase your GFR. And all of that removes burden for your kidneys. So now they can better keep up with your blood pressure. Oh, and that's the big thing here. I take a lot of blood pressure pills. And I take some in the morning. I take some in the in late afternoon to keep my blood pressure under control all day. My kidneys, kidney failure. As you mentioned earlier, my lowest GFR was 8. I got up and stable at 13 when they let me out of the hospital and told me it isn't going to get any better. Uh, my doctors told me that if the way I'm improving keeps going, they're going to be able to reduce the blood pressure meds that I take. That's going to save me money. Because I have to pay, even though I have insurance, come on, those pills are expensive. Oh, it adds up every month. Wow. Wow. Has... Has anyone ever said to you, you don't look like you have kidney disease? Some people do now, and I appreciate that. I'm like, hey, thank you. Have you seen my old videos, my first ones? <laughs> well, I, I seen some of the old ones. I was like, is that really James? <laughs> like, wow. Yeah, my eyes were so sunken in, so dark. My energy level was down. I mean, your skin looks fresh, yeah. uh, glycerin. <laughs> I, I, I mean, can you tell the difference? After oh, taking yeah. arena deal, well, for the I, two, I mean, for as long as you've taken it, as far as the improvement, like the quality of I life, know I'm better. I can feel that I'm better. I have even more energy. Uh, before there were, if I ate too much of certain things, I could feel it. I could get that like end of the day. You're like, oh, it's six o'clock. I'm starting to get tired. I'm starting to wear out. Um, I would get feelings like that before. I don't get those now. I don't know what my GFR is, but I'm. It is. It's better, or at least my everything else is better because I feel like there is no kidney problems with me at all, and I don't have any symptoms. I have absolutely no symptoms, no no pain, no headaches, no blurred vision, no vomiting, no weird taste in my mouth, none of those things that I used to have. No anemia, no you know fatigue that you just can't get rid of. All of that is gone. And it's no one thing. It's everything that I'm doing. And Renadil has been really, really helpful. I, I take it every day. Another one I take every day is my uh, renal multivitamin, Pro Renal Plus D. I actually have a, a bottle of it here. Sure. <laughs> they, got the, they got the free advertisement this time. <laughs> yeah. That one right there, it's a, um, it's a multivitamin. It's a renal multivitamin. It's got the things we need. There's some things like vitamin K, those build up in us. Vitamin E, vitamin A. We, we, we can't go grabbing Centrum off the shelf at Walgreens. It's bad for us. It has just what we need in it. So I take that. It gives me my B vitamins, little vitamin C, so it get absorbed, help fight anemia with the iron. I take my Renadil. I take the, the Renadil Kibo Fortis. Um, this is such great fiber. It's so easy. Um, and 93% of people in the United States don't get enough fiber. And that's one thing that your doctors also don't talk about is fiber. In America, they recommend 25 to 30 grams of fiber for the average adult. Guess how much fiber my doctor has me getting every day? How much? 75 to 100 grams. I'm not spending wow. all day in the bathroom. I don't have any problem. It took me a while to ramp up to that. But I take a lot of fiber because fiber is extremely helpful for those with kidney disease. And this Kibo Fortis, which is made by the same people who make Rinadil, and it's in that package. You know, people buy it, they get a bottle of this. They're easy to take pills. Um, it's so much easier than Benafiber. Benafiber, oh, it's, it's um, I don't know how the right way to say it. Well, this causes a lot of gas, okay? You're going to be tooting all day. So you don't want to be taking it before you go to work. <laughs> 
Um, I do not have that problem with this. The type of fiber that's in there doesn't cause gas and, and bloating and all that. Um, and it works great with the Renadyl. Um, so I take those. I eat high fiber foods, which also helps the Renadyl. Um, it's food for it. And I encourage everyone who's watching, order it. Use the code. Get the package. Three bottles is, is, is three months supply. Then you're going to want it. Do what I do. Get labs before. Take it, get labs after, see the proof for yourself what it does for you. And I posted my labs on Dad Bike TV. They can download my CBC and my renal function before and after. Click, download them right there they are and see how they did, you know, the proof right there. There they are. While I was eating a bad diet over the holidays. Now, one more question, James, before we go. Yeah, I know I kept you long. I really I'm fine. I'm, I can be here as long as you want. I talk kidney disease, loving it. <laughs> right. Well, okay. All right. I, I'll take it for maybe another 10 minutes for an hour for a 90 minute broadcast. Yeah. Um what I was, what I was gonna ask you, um and I, now it, it slipped my mind. <laughs> But 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 no. Um, how how do people reach you um, if they want to like take your advice or see you? I had your YouTube up there. Um, I mean, you got sixty five videos that they can scroll through uh, enough. But um, what if they somebody just wanted to reach out to you? to talk to you. Uh, are, are, are you personal like that? Oh, yeah. So the best way, so first, I do get a lot of messages. So it may take me a while to get back to people. But there are certain ones, like there was one today, you know, when I read it, the person was GFR4. I'm like, I stopped right what I was doing. Like, okay, I'm, I got to respond to this person now. Uh, but the best way is, is via email. James at dadvicetv.com is my email address. There's also a contact form on dadvicetv.com. They go over felt form. It shoots to me an email, and then when I reply, they'll have my email address, and they can reply to it. Email is great because it shows up on every device wherever I'm at in real time. I see it. I can respond. Um, they can also message me through Facebook. Now, I'm not on Facebook as much because Facebook's – it's hard to navigate when I have Dadvice TV and my own personal one, and my kids have a YouTube channel and a Facebook page. So all of that gets blended when I log into Facebook, and it makes it hard mm -hmm. to see the Dadvice TV stuff and to, and to sort <clears throat> through it. Uh, and my kids get a lot of kind of fan mail or their kid videos, so it's really hard <laughs> to dig through that. Um, email is definitely by far the best. I also try to encourage people to use the comments and ask questions and share advice because then not only do they have me and they don't have to wait for me to see it and respond, there are so many other people who have great experiences and great tips and they will chime in and say, hey, here's what I did. And maybe they're doing something that I didn't do. Now we have two options because what I have isn't always the best way. It's a way to do it. So I encourage people, use the comments in the video, um, ask questions, get answers, help each other out. And we see that happening in the comments. Someone will ask a question. Can I take this vitamin? Can I buy this drink mix? And people will chime in. And maybe they weren't aware, oh, that drink mix is on there. I never heard about it. I'm going to research it. Now they learned something because someone asked a question. So it, it helps that community learn. Because um, I don't want it to look like I'm a know-it-all. I'm not a know-it-all. There are probably a million different ways to treat kidney disease and to live a life with kidney disease. I'm just sharing what I've done and it's right, worked what you've for done. me. Yes. I'm not telling someone, hey, if you do something different, it's wrong. Now, if you're, you know, there are some diets that clearly are wrong. They're just not nutritionally sound. Um, but there are other diets that are going to work. There are other options that are going to work, and we're all different. Some people, why did they get their kidney disease? What caused it? What I do may not work to help them. So I don't want it to look like, or I prefer it not to be just 
only I can chime in. Let's get the whole community. Kidney warriors, we're there for each other. We've got each other's back. And if we mm-hmm. know something, we're going to say something. We're going to chime in and give that advice. And the Dad Advice TV community, I think it's a lot like your community, they're very positive. We want to help each other. We want to learn. So I, I also like that. It's another great way. But email is by far the best personal way. Maybe they have something they want to share or ask about that they don't want to say publicly. And there are certain things that I don't talk about in videos you know, that impact life with kidney disease. They're just not something I feel comfortable with or that I feel enough people would like to talk about. And there's some there's certain words that if I say on YouTube, my video gets marked as bad video. One of those being smoking cigarettes. Okay, you say that in a YouTube video, all right, you're bad. Right. Um, and if I talk about protein leakage in your urine, up, oh, you're bad. That video is a bad one. Um, so a lot of them I get marked as being bad. And I got to reach out to YouTube and say, come on, it's not bad. Um, watch the video. <laughs> right, right. Now, I, I know the question I was going to ask. What is your opinion about uh, companies or kidney coaches out there that charge for their uh, for information like diets to reverse kidney disease, something like that? Mm, that's a good question. It's a loaded question. Um, so, because I know you do all your stuff free, and oh, yeah. we do too. So, but well, I I've okay seen with, some stuff out there that people have to pay for yeah. for a uh, package. Some people have a business, and it's a sound business. There's nothing wrong with that. They've put a lot of effort, a lot of work into it, and they've made a business plan that here's what I'm going to do. You buy this package, you get this for it, and they're going to deliver value. And I'm okay with that. And if I see something of value out there, I will promote it. I will recommend it. Um, like if a dietitian has something they're selling, chances are it's helpful for you and it's worth it. Now, there are also people out there who are taking advantage of kidney patients and are, you know, desire for, for there to be a pill that fixes it, that cures it, that repairs the kidneys, that flushes them, that turns it on like a faucet and all those phrases that they use. Um, those ones I have a problem with, you know, they're, 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 uh, taking advantage of us and selling us something that really doesn't help, that doesn't give us what it promises, and it may even be dangerous. Um, those ones I have a problem with. But it's okay for those out there to, to have a business. Um, the kidney community, we need, we need stuff. We need help. We need awareness. We need support. And for some people, the only way to give it to us is they need to make money from it. And that's all right, because they're delivering us something. Everything I do, I do it for a number of reasons. And it's, you know, I don't charge. It's all free for everyone. Um, But there is something I get out of it. And you and I briefly talked about this a few days ago. By sharing my journey and making myself public, I now, and this is a good thing, I have to get better. I can't tell everybody. Uh, So the community out there has helps keep me on my toes, helps keep me on my diet. Uh, when I'm thinking like, oh, a slice of pecan pie, oh, that'd be delicious. Oh, I think of, oh, no, no, <laughs> if I do that, my labs are going to get shot. Oh, my goodness, I won't hear the end of it. I'm not going right. to do it. I'm going to stick to my diet. So the community helps me, and I just share what I've learned from my doctors. Uh, and, you know, my, my, my hope is one day, Dad advice to be large enough, you know, there'll be a sponsor. Some will sponsor some stuff, and that'll give money to do scholarships and all those other things I want. Um, there are some companies that are looking at, hey, what can we do? Well, you know, we'll send some money. We'll sponsor a video. Um, I'm very strict. You know, I, I've turned down so many of them because they want me to say something. It's like, eh, I'm only going to say what I believe and what's helpful. I'm not going to promote product X just because you're going to give me 250 bucks for it. That, that's No, no, no. I have a brand. I have a reputation. I have to keep that. So I stick with just things that I, I like and that work for me. But I'm okay with some people, you know, if they're, if they're going to make a business of it, there are some legitimate ones out there that are providing a good service. 
but there are those that are just taking advantage of us. And those ones I'm not uh, not thrilled with. Wow. Well, James, man, this this has really been a great show. Um, I didn't get my fifty, but that's okay. Oh, I'm darn. still I'm still striving. Uh, you gave a lot of tips, good information. I, I really appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule to come on Urban Reno Talk with Tamika and Steve. My partner had to leave a little early. She has a okay. early morning wake up. But uh, this this has been great. And we, we just, you know, love to uh, collaborate with you in the future. Certainly. Too. Uh, let's bring you more onto YouTube because in YouTube, is going to help kidney patients out there find you and get this information. That I think that's the biggest challenge. How do we get this information to the people out there who want it and who need it? Oh, absolutely. In fact, we are simultaneously broadcasting on YouTube now and the uh, uh, Facebook our, um, Urban Health Outreach Media page. But yeah, I, I've been doing, since I've been talking to you, I've been doing a lot more uh, YouTube videos, and I've been seeing a lot more views on a lot of the other videos. Uh, views are, in, you know, increasing. So uh, something's happening. Yeah. Well, here's what we should do. We should take this video, this recording, put a wrapper on it, throw it on the channel and on Davice TV. Let's get it in front of those almost 60,000 people and encouraging them to also subscribe to your channel so then they'll get notifications and start tuning in. Let's oh, that's jump, awesome. Let's give you a lot of, lot of followers. All right, how, how do you do that? We're not in a race to beat each other. We're here to oh, reach no. those students, reach those kidney patients, and give them this information. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That's Yeah, there's no race at all, but trying to race to get information out there yeah. for people <laughs> to absorb it. But when you say put a package on it, uh, what do you mean by that? It'll be me talking about this is great information. This is somebody you should oh, okay, subscribe okay. to. And then pretty much it'll just, it'll be like a little bumper on the beginning. And then it'll sure. come right into the recording. And that way, if I post it, you're going to get a, thousands of people watching it within just a few days. And hopefully a good amount of those are going to subscribe. And then it'll be there, keep getting more people um, and the average on, on my channel, even a, a low view video after just a, a month or so, it's about 11,000 views. Wow. So we can get your numbers up there. We can get this to more people. All right, that's then we awesome. Then broadcast and you got an even bigger audience. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. So, well, I'll send that to you through email. Yeah, just however I can get this video, uh, if you have a way to download it, um i can grab it from yeah it won't be it won't fit an email so maybe dropbox or something like that or sure if it's on youtube i can actually pull it yeah. from there too it's on youtube it's <laughs> yeah, on I urban health outreach media yeah i'll pull okay. it there and then we'll put a little wrapper we'll get it up there this week and we'll get more people watching it they'll get All to right. watch the live recording after it was recorded awesome <laughs> awesome all right, James. Well, again, man, thank you so much for taking the time uh, coming on. Uh, I, I know you got a busy schedule. You work full time and you do this. So, again, we look forward to working with you and bring you back on. We have several other shows as well. And I know Jerry Brown, who does Warriors Quest, which is a show that helps uh, kidney patients search for a living donor. Mm -hmm. I uh, watched one of his either earlier today or or yesterday. You do so many shows. Yeah. yeah. Are, you're doing more than I'm doing. Look, we're just trying to capture kidney disease from, from all different angles, from uh, pre-dialysis uh, in the stages to dialysis to transplant to someone may have had a transplant and rejected and they back on dialysis. So we just try to capture all different angles. Yeah, and that's great. This information's needed because there's so little of it out there, especially with a positive view of it. So much of it that, that people do find is just doom and gloom, and that's not what they need. That's not going to help them. Yeah, not at all. Not at all. All right, 
James Fagan, a Fabian, aka Dad Vice TV. You can catch him on YouTube. Uh, like I said, he has tons of videos. In fact, 65 and counting. Um, is there ever going to be a designated stop point, or are you just going to no, keep? No, there won't be a stop point. So one of the things I'm 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 just started on YouTube uh, is I'm going to start doing Q and A. So someone asks a question. I'm going to answer it in a video and make that available. And I'm going to start building up these little tiny short videos, little tips. Someone asks, hey, what do you think of, of, of uh, taking this much fiber? What did your doctor tell you? I can then say, hey, here's the answer to that. It's not a full video where I'm writing a script, but I'm going to start doing lots of little micro videos, having those available. And those are things I can be out and about, and I can shoot on my phone. Real quick, here's two minutes of me talking about this. Boom, get it up there right now. If people like it, then maybe I do a full-fledged video. And I want to start doing more interviews, getting you know dietitians, nephrologists, researchers on here, asking them questions and letting them share what they're doing. And there's there are some amazing companies out there that are working on things for kidney patients. And they're starting to see a lot of progress in those. And I want to help them reach more people and make them aware of them. Wow. I mean, you got the subscribers that do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which is surprising to me. I'm very happy with that. That's awesome. <laughs> All right, James, I'll let you go again. Thank you for coming on Urban Reno Talk with Tamika and Steve. And we'll definitely be reaching out to you. Awesome. Look forward to the next time we do this. All right, man. Take care. Thank you again. All right. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye. Yeah, this was an awesome, awesome show. If you missed this show and didn't get this advice, woo! Tell them people, man. Rewind this show. Go back. Tell the friends, other kidney warriors, that James Fabian, aka Dad Vice TV, was on Urban Reno Talk with Tamika and Steve on April the 9th. So, guys, this has been an extended broadcast. We went over our usual hour. We just wanted to get you the uh, latest information and in what Dad Vice TV is doing. Again, he went from 8 GFR to 33. And he mentioned that he had this product that we talked about. And I'm going to do another show coming up uh, talking about this product. Uh, arena deal all right so with that being said guys thank you for watching